Ciao guys, welcome back to my channel. So many of you asked me to do a video on a SQL project and so here I am. I will cover now the context and background for the project, the setup and how to connect to the dataset, identifying our stakeholder, an initial exploratory data analysis, and then the data analysis itself that you can replicate and add to your own portfolio. And finally, our recommendations based on the insights. And by the way, if you like these types of video, let me know in the comments below which other projects you would like me to cover. And well, enough for the intro, let's get into the so what of this video. So today we are working with an interesting dataset that covers information about apps available on the Apple Store. You can find in the description the link to the data which I found on Kaggle.com which is probably the number one website to get free data for your projects. And so we have a CSV file called AppleStore.csv which gives us a lot of information for the apps like the apps names, the size in bytes, the ratings, type of apps, number of supporting devices, number of supporting languages and much more. But there's more to an app than just these features, right? That's why our second data set comes into play. The file is called Apple Store underscore description and will give us an overview of each application description because think about it the way an app is described can tell us a lot about how it interfaces with its user base and how it might be perceived in the market for today's project i'm going to take advantage of a fantastic online resource that is sqlightonline.com now what's brilliant about this tool is that it allows us to work directly with our data online no installations required that's right no need to worry about setting up databases installing softwares or any of the usual hassles. All we need to do is upload our data and start working with it straight away, running our SQL queries on the browser. However, there is one limitation we need to work around. So SQLiteOnline.com allows us to upload files with a maximum size of 4 megabytes. Now the dataset we are using for this project is a bit larger than this limit. So what I've done is to split our large CSV file into four smaller files, each under the 4 megabytes limit, and upload those separately. SQL has a powerful feature known as uh, Union All, which allows us to seamlessly combine our four separate tables back into a single one right within SQLiteOnline.com. So now let me show you SQLite.com. So we open the interface, there is no login required. And now I will just click on here, import, and I will import Apple Store.csv. I will select the column name as the, the first line, and then I will click on OK. And then I will do exactly the same for the other for Apple Store description files that I just mentioned. So we are gonna quickly do that for uh, each of the files. Okay, and so now that we have these five tables that you can see on the left-hand side menu, I'm gonna create a table um, that we are gonna call Apple store underscore description underscore combine and basically what i'm gonna do with this table is just combining the four apple description tables that we just imported and now i'm gonna run this union all statement and this will create as you can see on the left hand side the Apple Store Description Combined Table. Effectively, we are back to working with our data as a single unified dataset, ready to perform our analysis. Okay, so now the first step in any data analysis project is to identify the stakeholder, the personal group who has an interest in the outcome of the analysis. In our case, our stakeholder is an aspiring app developer who needs data-driven insights to decide what type of app to build. And so they are seeking answers to questions like what app categories are most popular, what price should I set, and how how can I maximize user ratings? Then the next step is exploratory data analysis, often abbreviated as EDA. EDA helps us to understand the characteristics of the data, the structure, and often reveals issues in the dataset that need to be addressed before further analysis. These issues might include missing or inconsistent data, errors or outliers. And so identifying these issues early on can save us a lot of time and effort in later stage of the analysis. And so let's now dive in into our exploratory data analysis. Okay, and so the first thing that we can do is to check the number of unique apps in both tables because this ensures we are dealing with the same set of applications in both the data sets, because a discrepancy could mean missing data in either of the two tables. And so in order to do this, I will do a select count distinct ID, and I'm gonna call this uh, unique app IDs from the Apple Store table. And then I'm gonna do the same, so add another select count distinct ID from the Apple Store description combined table. And then I will run the first one, so we have 7197 app IDs, and also we run the second one where we have the same. So there are no missing data between the two tables. Okay, now as a second step, I can check for any missing values in uh, some of the key fields of the tables. And so in order to do this, I will do a select 
account star and I will call this missing values from the Apple Store table. And then I can check some of the key columns. So I'm gonna do a where track name is null, uh, where the uh, user rating is null and or the um, prime genre is null as well. And, uh, and so I will run this. And as you can see, there is uh, zero missing values. So it seems that the data set is uh, quite clean. And I will do the same for the Apple Store description combined table. And I'm gonna check if the uh, app underscore uh, description is null. So I'm also gonna run this one as well. And as you can see, again, and there are no missing values. So even the second table is, uh, is clean and there are no data quality issues. Now let's find out the number of apps per uh, genre. And this gives an overview of the types uh, distribution in the Apple Store. And this gives an overview of the genre distribution in the Apple Store, helping us identify dominant uh, genres. So I'm gonna do a select prime genre, comma count all as, and I'm gonna call this uh, number of apps from the Apple Store table, and then I'm gonna do a group by prime underscore genre, order by num apps, and I'm gonna order in descending uh, order. Okay, and then I run this, and this is our result to find the number of um, number of apps per genre, and so we see that games and entertainment um, are clearly leading here with a huge number of apps there. Then I want to get also an overview of the apps ratings, so I'm going to do a um, select I'm going to select the minimum of the user rating as I'm going to call this mean rating. And then I also want to see the max user rating. I also want to see the average user rating from the uh, Apple Store table. And I'm going to run this as well. And as you can see, the minimum rating is zero. The max rating is five and the average is around 3.5. Obviously, you can continue to explore the data much more than this. And actually, if you have some suggestions, leave them in the comments below. But for now, I think we already got a good idea of the data set we are dealing with. A little break from today's SQL project as there is something I'd like to share with you. Over the past month, I've used a tool that completely revolutionized the way I concentrate on my work. It's called GetSound.ai, which is kindly sponsoring today's video. Music plays a massive role in my productivity routine as I always work or study with something playing on my headphones. And this is where GetSound's magic really shines. It's a cutting-edge AI tool that crafts real-time soundscapes, taking into account factors like location, the current weather, and even the time of day. And you can use it on your mobile, desktop, or tablet, wherever you prefer. And by the way, the music that I'm playing now in the background is actually from GetSound.ai. Now you might ask yourself, how does all of this help with your productivity? Well, imagine having an immersive audio environment tailored precisely to match your current setting and mood. It removes distractions, calms your mind, and lets you focus like never before. And one feature that I absolutely love about Get Sound is the session timer, which is great if you need to set a specific timer for deep work or meditation, or even to stop the music before sleeping. So if you're looking for a productivity boost or just want to explore a new unique musical experience, I definitely recommend you to try GetSound.ai. Head to the link in the description below to get a 50% discount and make sure to try it out. Now, back to work. Now let's move on to the juicy part and start our actual analysis to find interesting insights for our stakeholder. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is to determine whether paid apps have higher ratings than uh, free apps. And so to do that, I will do a select uh, case statement. And then when the price is higher than zero, then we're gonna call this paid, else we're gonna call it free. And as app underscore type, then we are gonna select the average of the user rating. And we're gonna call this as average underscore rating from the Apple Store table. And then we're gonna group by the app type okay and then if i run this we see that the on average the rating of paid apps is slightly higher compared to the free apps okay now i want to check if apps that support more languages have higher ratings and so in a very similar way i'm gonna do a select a case statement when the lang underscore uh, num is minor than 10 then i will call this um, minor than 10 languages then when the lang num is between 10 and 30 
then I will call this 10 to 30 languages, else higher than 30 languages. And I will call this language underscore bucket. And then again, I will check the average of the user rating and call this average rating from the Apple Store. And then we need to group by the language bucket and then order by the average rating in uh, when we're going to order in descending order and so from here we can see that the middle bucket has higher average user rating so we don't necessarily need to work on so many languages and can actually focus effort on other aspects of the app okay now i want to check the genres with uh, low ratings and i will tell you in just a second why so i'm gonna do a select prime underscore genre and then i select the average for the user rating from the apple store table and then i'm gonna group by prime underscore genre order by average rating this time in ascending order and i'm just interested in the first 10 results um forgot to add the group by prime genre so i'm just gonna add it here and if i run this then you will see that uh, for example in the catalogs in the finance and in a book category in this category the users gave bad ratings and so um, meaning that they're not satisfied and so there might be good opportunity to create an app in this space okay and now as a next step i want to see if there is correlation between the app description length and the user rating and so again we're gonna do a uh, case statement in this case i will add the select but i will start from the um the join that we need to do before completing the select statement because we need to join the apple store table uh, so i'm gonna do from apple store as a join apple store underscore description underscore combine as b and i will join on the id because that is the the key that is um, present in both tables so a dot id equal to b dot id and now i can uh, complete the um, select statement so i'm going to do a case when the length of uh, the uh, b dot app description is uh, minor than 500 and i will do um, i will call this short uh, description then if the length is um, between 500 and 1000 then uh, i will uh, call this medium length else will be a long uh, description and so this will be the when call this as the description length bucket now again i will um, check the average for the user rating and i will call this the average rating and now um, i will need to group by the description length bucket and then order by the average uh, rating in descending order and I run this and uh, oh I see the error there so I uh, put minus instead of equal so let me correct this one let's run this query here and in here um, you can see that the actually the longer the description and the better is the user rating on uh, on average so this is quite a cool insights as well and now for the last thing i want to check the top rated um, apps divided by the um, app category and this is kind of a bonus code that i will give you here because i think it's a bit more advanced as it uses a window function and so let me uh, put the code in here and so let me uh, just quickly explain what this code is doing so first we do the uh, rank over um, window function so this is a window function in sql that assigns a rank to each row within a window of rows then we do the partition by prime underscore genre so this is creating a separate window for each unique Jean, and then we order by user rating in descending order but also by rating count uh, underscore dot in again descending order and so the rows are ranked by uh, the user rating in descending order and in case there are ties so the same uh, rating tie those ties are broken by the total user rating counts and then at the end we do a um, so this is going to be a sub query and then we do uh, another select from um, so we're going to select from our ranking operation and then we are going to uh, just be interested in the rank equal to one so the first um, line of the of those ranks and so this outer query selects only the rows where the rank is one meaning the top rated app in each genre and so with this query we get the result of the all the apps with the highest total user 
rating count for each genre. So for example, we know that in business uh, genre, we have this TurboScan Pro app, which is the one with the highest number of ratings and also the best uh, rating. And so this could be a good insight for our stakeholder to check these apps as the you know top performing ones. And so the ones that ideally uh, this person should try to uh, emulate. Okay, so now let's summarize the final recommendations for our client. So number one, paid versus free apps. So our data analysis has shown that paid apps generally achieves slightly higher ratings than the free counterparts and so this could be due to a number of reasons so users who pay for an app may have higher engagement and perceive more value leading to the better ratings and so we can tell our client you know if uh, they perceive that the quality of their apps is good then to consider also uh, charging a certain amount for the app then the second one so language support so interestingly our analysis found that apps supporting a moderate number of languages between 10 and 30 at the highest average rating and so it's not really about the quantity of the language that your app supports it's more like focusing on the right languages for uh, for your app then number three high performing genres so there are categories like finance and book where existing apps have lower user ratings and this suggests that user needs are not being fully met and so this can represent a market opportunity because if you can create a quality app in these categories that addresses user needs better than the current offering there is potential for high user ratings and market penetration then we check the app description length so the length of the app description has a positive correlation with the user ratings and so users likely appreciate having a clear understanding of the app's features and capabilities before they download and so a detailed well-crafted app description can set clear expectation and eventually increase the satisfaction of users then we also see in the target ratings so on average all the apps have a rating of 3.5 and so in order to uh, stand out from the crowd uh, we should aim for a uh, rating that is higher than the average uh, 3.5 and then lastly the games and entertainment genres so the games and entertaining category uh, have a very high volume of apps suggesting the market may be uh, saturated and so entering these spaces might be challenging due to high competition however it also suggests a high user demand in these sectors and that is it guys a comprehensive sql project that you can replicate step by step and add to your own data portfolio i really hope this was helpful and if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment down below don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this and i will also leave here in the screen a Tableau project and a Python project that you might want to check out as well. And well, enjoy the rest of your day. Ciao for now and see you in the next one.